What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at labels and buttons with TTK Bootstrap and Kinter. I guess, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to look at TTK Bootstrap. We're going to do labels and buttons. But before we get started, be sure to grab a totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome. All over 150 pages describes the attributes of all the Kinter widgets and the TTK widgets. So grab that if you haven't so far. Head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book. Enter your email address and I'll shoot you over a free copy right away. And while you're there, check out tkinter.com membership. You get all my Kinter courses for one low price, including an upcoming TTK Bootstrap course. It's not up yet, but it should be pretty soon. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership. So check that out if you're interested. Okay, in the last video, I talked a little bit about TTK Bootstrap, this really cool library that allows you to style your Kinter apps in a much more modern way. So now we're going to actually dive in and start learning how to use it. So in this video, we're going to do just a very basic app to get it up and running, show you how to get an app up and running. I'm going to show you how to do labels and buttons in this video, uh, as well as a little function based on the button. So we can click this and it says goodbye world, hello world, goodbye world, hello world, etc. So very basic, but it allows us to see the different types of buttons we can use and the different ways you can configure labels and buttons and all that good stuff. So head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file. I'm just calling it TB underscore intro. TB short for TTK bootstrap, I guess. TB, whatever. And this is our basic Kinter starter code that we would always have. Root, TK instance, you know, your icon, you set the size and you've got your main loop. So your TTK Bootstrap app is gonna be a little bit different than that. So first things first, we need to make sure we actually have TTK Bootstrap installed in our system. So head over to your terminal and just pip install TTK Bootstrap. I've already got it. So it's gonna be like, hey, you've already got it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and install and you should be good to go. So first we need to come up here and import some things that come with TTK Bootstrap. So first it's from TTK Bootstrap.constants. We wanna import everything. And I'll show you what those are in just a second. You don't necessarily have to do this, but you may want to, you may not. I'll explain what that means in just a minute. So we also need to import TTK bootstrap itself. So we want to import TTK bootstrap as, and I'm going to call this TB. Now they suggest you import it as TTK, but if you're going to use TTK, or if you're, you know, going to get confused by that, I suggest you just import it as something else. TB short for TTK bootstrap or you might want to import it as TTKB, you know, whatever floats your boat, I'm just going to go TB. It really doesn't matter, but you need to import it as something so that you can use it. So, okay, in a normal Kinter app, you have your TK instance. Now you can do that with TTK Bootstrap, but they don't suggest it. They suggest something else. Instead, they say you should go tb.window. And then inside of here, you can pass whatever theme you want. So you can go theme name equals, and I want superhero. I'm going to use the superhero theme. So there are a bunch of themes you can use. Head over to the TTK Bootstrap docs. That's at ttkbootstrap.readthedocs.io. And you can come over to themes, click either light or dark. I want dark. And then here, these are just the themes. So if you want solar, you type in solar. If you want superhero, you type in superhero. Darkly, darkly, you know, you get the idea. So go ahead and pick one. I've picked superhero. I think that looks kind of cool. That's neat. Now we can click on style guide. We're going to look at that in just a minute too. Uh, but first we can come back over here. And if we just go ahead and save this and run this again, Python tb underscore intro dot pi, we get an error because I forgot an equal to sign. It looks like, yeah, right there. So this should be root equals. So now I'll come back over here. Give this another try. We have another error, man. I'm on fire today. This should be TTK boot strap. There we go. All right. One more time. We see right off the bat, we have a different color background. Now, when you pick a specific theme, every widget you use is going to be colored and shaped and whatever based on that theme. So, so to keep that in mind. So let's start out with a label. So I'm going to call this my underscore label. And this is going to be a TB dot label. And now it's TB here because we imported this as TB there. So if you imported it as something else, this would be whatever you imported it as. Same thing up here with the window thing. And these all act pretty much the same as your basic Kinter widgets. So you can set the text any way you want. I'm just going to say, hello world. You can also set the font in the normal way that you would. So I'm going to say Helvetica and give this a size like 28. Now here's where it gets a little bit different. You have this boot style attribute here, and this is where you get to pick 
whatever, however you want to style this thing. So TTK Bootstrap comes with the same basic color scheme that the Bootstrap CSS framework comes with. So let me just copy and paste these in real quick. I'll put these on another line. You have the default primary, secondary, success, info, warning, danger, light, and dark. So light and dark, they are how they sound. One's light, one's dark. The default is just the default. It's usually like white or something. Primary is blue. Secondary is gray. Success is green. Info is a light blue. Warning is yellow, I think. And danger is red. And you could see these if you want. Head over to the style guide and they're listed here. So primary is this dark blue. Secondary is gray. Green, sort of light blue. Yeah, warning is, looks like orange, I guess. And danger is red. And then light and dark. So uh, those are sort of the colors you can choose from. So let's say, well, let me put this on another line so we can see this. We could just start out with the default and see what that looks like. Now, I've got this in quotation marks, and that's perfectly fine. But up here, we imported these constants. So if you want, you can use just the constants, which are all capital, whatever, right? I tend to not do that because I'm used to putting them in quotes like regular Kenter and regular TTK stuff. So I will usually just go like this and, you know, do it like that. Either way works, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, but if you want to use the constants, you have to import them up there. If you don't, you don't have to import it at all. So, all right, let's go ahead and my underscore label dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 50, really push it down the screen. So let's save this and run it, see what we have here. And boom, we get this hello world in this sort of default light color. Now this is white in default in this theme. That color might be a different color in a different theme. So just sort of keep that in mind. So if you're using a light themed theme, I'm guessing that's probably gonna be black as the default instead of white. So you just have to play around with your specific theme to see what's what. So we can come back over here real quick and play around with this if we want. If we wanted to change this to JIT danger, for instance, then if we save this and run it, we're gonna get red text, right? So that's cool. Now there is another attribute you could play around with when it comes to labels in your boot style. And to use multiple attributes, you just put a comma in there and then do the, uh, the other one you want. So uh, we can also do something called inverse. And this will just sort of reverse whatever your color is and give you sort of a, a blocky looking background. So if we save this and run, it's kind of interesting. We see now the whole thing is like this square of the inverse color. So the text was red, now the block is red and the, the actual text color is white itself. So uh, that's kind of cool. Keep that in mind if you want to do something like that. And when it comes to labels, that's pretty much all there is to it. So you can inverse or not, and then you pick your color. So, okay, that's cool. Now let's create a button. Let's call this one my underscore button. And this is gonna be a TB dot button. And just like the label, pretty much everything about this thing will act the same way a regular Kinter button acts, except you have this boot style attribute. All the TB widgets have a boot style attribute. That's sort of the main difference. So here we can set the text. We can set this equal to click me, <laughs> right, whatever. And then we wanna add a boot style and set that evil equal to first, what color do we want this to be? Well, let's go primary this time and see how that looks. So let's go my underscore button, the app pack, give this a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen a little bit. Let's save this and run, see how this looks. And so you get this primary color blue. Click me, you'll notice when you click on it, there's little dashes around it, that's kind of neat. All right, there we go. So there are several different attributes you can play around with in the boot style for your button. So here we have primary. Let me just put this on another line here so we can see. We can change this from a regular button to an outline. So this is kind of cool. And let's change this from primary to info. Eh, success. Let's <laughs> see what success looks like. Always wanted to know what success looks like. And you can see now it's outlined, right? That's what that outline attribute does. And of course the color is green. If we hover over it, it turns back into a blocky thing. When you click it, you get the little white dashes. So that's kind of cool. You can also sort of make it not really even a button at all. You can make it just like a look like a link, right? So instead of outline, we could put just link here, save this and run it. Now you're just gonna get flat out text, but if you hover over it, it kind of changes color like an HTML link. And again, you can click it like normal. So that's kind of cool. I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to outline. 
Very cool. Now, buttons do things, and to do things with a button in Kinter, you give it a command. And the same thing works with TTK Bootstrap, you give it a command. So let's create a command called changer. We don't have that just yet. So let's come up here and create it. Let's define changer. And here, outside of here, let's create a counter and set it equal to zero just for fun. And then let's set our counter plus equal to one every time we click the button. And let's run some logic. Let's say if counter modulus two equals zero, that means it's divisible by two. That means it's even. Let's change our label, my underscore label dot config and set the text equal to hello world. Just go ahead and copy this else. Let's set the text equal to goodbye world. So if it's even, it'll say hello world. If it's odd, it'll say goodbye world, right? So the main thing I want to show you here is this dot config. You use dot config in Kinter to change things on the fly later on in your app. And that same thing holds true in TTK Bootstrap. So if you're worried about that, same exact thing there. So nothing to worry about there. We can go ahead and save this and run it. One last time we can click me. Uh-oh. Uh, we need to make our label global. So let's come up here and say global counter. There we go. Now we come back here and run this guy. Click this. Goodbye world. Hello world. Goodbye world. Hello world. So there you have a very basic app with TTK Bootstrap. Like I said, it's very similar to using regular Kinter or TTK widgets. Just a couple of little things. Really, the bootstrap thing is the main difference you're going to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis when you're using this. And uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out tkinter.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership. That's access to all my Kinter courses for one low price. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com, and I'll see you in the next video.